Okay, welcome back to more Road Warden. We'll just get right onto it because this is a whole lot of reading. I wonder, back in Hoblaven, did you spend any time in Backwood Corner? It used to be this dark, dirty alley with muggers working even in daylight. I stayed there with Octavia, the miller, in exchange for doing chores for her. She had this small wooden hut. Let's see, since the wars, the soldiers avoided it. Huh. It doesn't say lie, so it's probably it could be true that it's actually better now. Huh, fifty years. It fell to a great fire. <laughs> Alright. So since none of these mentioned being lies, any one of these would determine what the reality of the street is. Huh. So let's see. This means it's bad. This means it's good. This means it's still bad, but the boarhead is still there. And it fell to its uh, mostly peaceful fire. A fiery but peaceful. <laughs> okay, let's just say it's better. You wouldn't recognize it. It's now a respectable street with one of the fanciest inns in the city. The apple and the boar. Huh. You describe how a family of southerners started a large shipyard right next to the alley, working on exotic boats in unusual shapes. Needing hands to work, they offered food and coins to many local thugs, and with time, more light and stalls sewed up in the alley. As you describe the new inn, thighs burst into cheerful laughter. So it's the same family that ran the Boarhead Inn? And do you think that I dare to doubt the old lady's endurance? People like her, brave enough to bear the toil of their world, are going to bring salvation to all of us. Let's see, what would it take you to make consider? You heard the necromancers? I think I'm going to be asking all of this stuff. Yeah. What would it take to make you consider joining the Hovlaven? Ah, I can consider it right now. While she laughs, her eyes remain keen. But if you want me to give you some answers, let's see. She looks up to the right. Oh, and to the right. Theatrically raising her hand to her chin. Some gestures of goodwill would be a great start. Since you're the guild's messenger, I need to know you can be relied on. She gives you a wide, white grin. And that's only the first step, I assume. Of course. Do you even have the power to handle tax negotiations? She scoffs loudly at your head's sake. Do enough of, uh, for my village and I'll hand you a beautiful signed letter. A list of all the things that my neighbors are looking for, as well as what they can give in return. Your superiors are going to see more than enough to prepare their offer. She rubs her hands. I think that's fair. Yeah, it looks like we're in agreement. Let's just go for it. Perfect. One more thing, though. She puts her elbows on the table, leaning closer to you. If you go behind my back, I'm not going to wait for a dagger. I'll end you first. She rests her chin against her open palms, giving you a disarmingly... Yeah, that's correct. Warm smile. I'm sure people know, already know that we have a new road warden. Maybe ask around to see if anyone needs your help. The more my neighbors trust you and need you, the more willing they'll be to offer you better pay. Well, let's start here. What can I do for you? Ah, so kind of you to ask. But before I ask you to run, let's see how you can walk, shall we? Her eyes wander left and right, and she gestures for a nearby guard to move away. He nods, then gestures at a few other souls to follow him. While a few of the locals cast curious looks at you, they turn away as quickly as you notice them. The mayor's shiny green eyes are still locked on you, and her voice is close to a whisper. Since Asterion's disappearance, there's little trade on, uh, there's little trade on the roads. And not much news reaches us. Be so kind. Her flirtatious tone distracts you with how obviously fake it is. And help me learn some interesting tales about our neighbors. Yeah, I smile back to her. You mean ones that weren't meant to reach you? See, I knew that deep down you're a true sage. She titters and straightens up, adjusting her cape without haste. Do you have something to say? Let's see. I only have one thing. The squad that made camp at the northern crossroads is now nothing more than two people. They, pl they, they plan to return to Hoblaven before fall. 
that's probably not the best thing to have said. <laughs> but I guess I might be more on her side than the guild's side, because I'm plain sincere. Since they cleared that camp of brigands, they went, they went so quiet, I almost forgot about them. She rubs her chin with her thumb. I'm surprised they've managed to stay alive till this day. Sending such an inexperienced group here so that the officials misjudge this land. That's all I have to say. Tell me, how do people dress in the city these days? Is it similar to what we have here? Before the war, the merchants were wearing those really long dresses and robes. Way too long for my taste. They got mud stains after every rain, and I see no reason to keep the shoes completely hidden. And see, not anymore, there's always a shortage of fabric. Most people wear tunics like in the old days. For years, there was not enough hemp and wool at hand, so people have started to wear furs again. What does headgear have to do with anything? I don't pay much attention to fabric. Huh. Yeah, so it, it just about all of them suggest that they don't wear those long dresses anymore. Huh. Let's see, this is... They're in want, so they can't really afford things. I... They went back to the old ways. I think that might actually be the best one to see that they're getting close to each other. Not enough, so people are worried for fairs again. Now that's just sad. When I was there, only the monks, monks wore them. For some reason. I have no doubt that the vengeful beasts have thrown their roads into a nightmare. The city folk would be smarter putting it on rags. Even though she sighs, there's a cruel satisfaction in her smile. Alright, tell me about the necromancer. She taps her fingers on the table. Yes, I have. Right, I. the wording was, can you tell me about them? Okay. After you ask her to tell you more, she tell, uh, she seems to regain her confidence. Blah. You mean white marshes, for sure. I don't know all that much about what's happening there. We avoid their lands, if we can. She frowns. I shouldn't gossip about it with strangers. We can talk about it on another occasion. Okay. You seem to be fairly well off, even more so than the other people in the village. What's your secret? She's the mayor. I'll go ahead. See, she reaches for her buckle and her voice grows cold. There's no secret, traveler. There's hard work, risks, and uh, sacrifices, and the support of those that care about me. The good things that happen to me shine on my people just as much. Think about it before you mention it again. Huh, maybe there are some things I shouldn't ask about. Tell me about Howler's Den. It is what it seems like. The greatest village in the far north. Yeah, this place is uh, Howler's Den. Yeah. She raises her hand and makes an inviting gesture. Though I hope you still improve this and that. Uh, to improve. She winks at you, but is suddenly interrupted by the pained cry of a little boy. Who hurt his knee during a fall. As an amused elder tries to calm him down, the mayor shrugs it off and titters. Then meets your eyes again. Life's good here. We have what we need, and a lot of what we want. Building on top of more than 12 generations of hard work and bravery. She spends a good few minutes telling you about mouflons. Wheat, rye, hemp, cheese, and wool. Proud of every glimpse of prosperity. Whenever she mentions an artisan, separate or farmer, she doesn't miss a chance to mention how significantly she improved their conditions. She also admits some topics. You hear of no tales, songs, ancestors, rituals, or days of prayer. It's like listening to a tax collector. Only at the very end of her speech does he mention the wisdom of the elders, now kept in the teachings of the druids, who help her guide those who trust her. They heal our wounds and our gardens, she explains, but then changes the topic to all the fruit trees, hares, and nuts in the woods. Once she's done with it, I nod politely. Huh, is it usually okay? Well, we talk and talk, but I still don't know where you are from, Grim. What's your story? Have you lived in Hobleven your entire life? See, in a way, I know it as well as any other city folk. But every spring, I trained in horsemanship in a nearby village. I wonder if that will raise my my horsemanship. Is that a stat? Only for a bit. I was raised in a small village just nearby. I moved to the city after I decided to look for luck as a road warden. My past is already buried. Let's not dig it out into it. Oh wait, I actually had a, some kind of 
past thing, didn't I? I might have forgotten what that was. But I'll say I came from a village. To see the city for the first time, after being surrounded by a couple of small houses and fields, it's a strange feeling, isn't it? She puts her hand on the table. Even after my second winter there, I felt like a stranger. But those who know how to live in the countryside, close to the wilderness, will always find a new home for ourselves, don't you think? She gives you an encouraging smile. Yeah, I really want to know about the ruined village. So tell me about it. Her tense gaze shifts into an awkward click of her tongue as she leans away from you. I don't even want to think about their tragic fate. No one can negotiate with the wrath of the herds. A long pause. And I better not find you upsetting my neighbors with these sad questions. It was a challenging time for all of us. A wound we won't forget. Huh. I was in Pelt of the North. Is that like a war? The innkeeper feels uneasy about Glossia's band. I can't remember what that is. When you mentioned the raids on the northern villages, her eyes narrow. Are you sure? It's the first I've heard about it. Glossia has been around since years back, but she's not much of a nuisance. I'm just a messenger. He's asking for you to join forces with him. Well, I can't give you my answer. I won't ask our hunters to endanger their lives in the pursuit of some gossip. Okay, I guess I could ask around. Let's leave it at that. She sighs with exaggerated relief. What a splendid idea! There are only three villages in the north. White marshes farther north by the road, gale rocks by the northern coast, and creeks in the far east. Bring me news from those places and you'll get my answer. Ah, sir. I need them on my side. I keep thinking, surely. City folk don't eat just wild game, salt, fish, and groats. What animals do people breed in the nearby villages? Excuse me. Mostly ibexes. City folk, right? Monks need their parchment. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I think if I buff up this place too high above the guild, they're not gonna be. Let's see, I guess. I, I definitely eat people. There's a lot of mouflons. The monks need their parchment. I guess I'll go with that. Oh, that's terrible. Dang it. You catch a hint of annoyance in her laughter. Our livestock won't sell well, but that's fine. Whoops. It's hard to keep the number of lambs high. We would need to sacrifice a field to raise our new flock. Okay, so it's probably. Oh, not so bad that it's like that. Yeah, they wanted to sell stuff. Alright, I remember that one. I saw a weird tree south of here near that pond. The one with the altar standing in front of it. She straightens up and raises her chin. You mean Beholder, the guardian spirit of our wetlands. Every fall, we bring it our gifts and in return it provides us with its blessed fruit. The flesh of the forest. She stares into your eyes. It's older than the oldest books and the oldest thoughts. The druids help us honor its sleep and show us how to ask for its help. Neither of these rituals, she scoffs, would be of use to you. Okay, you need my assistance. First, I need to be sure you can handle yourself. Bring me some juicy rumors, won't you? And maybe talk with my neighbors. We okay? I basically have that already. Uh, thank you for your time. All right, so we're finally done talking to the mayor. Eric's the shop innkeeper. What did he want again? Let's go check him out. Even though the counter stands outdoors, it's not rotten or dirty. And you guess that, like the other furniture, it's brought inside every night. Okay, then it must be this place. Eric approaches you with a smile and leans on its surface and its his fists. Oh, with his fists. He's portly and even taller than his neighbors. He's got freckles, short gray hair, and an elegant beard. His long woolen orange tunic has a decorative cut right under the neck, and loose braids at the edges. How can I help you, traveler? His accent is heavy, nothing like his wife's. He stomps with a heavy boot and looks around, as if he's just waiting to get back to his other tasks. His fingers are still dirty from weeding the garden. How tired am I? I'm actually kind of ugly. Uh, that means I'm dirty. I really should clean up. Uh, I think otherwise... 
I need more of this stuff. How much money do I have? I have three monies. Okay, let's use our room. Sure thing, you know it. My kids keep it clearer than you'd find in the city. Just tell me when you're ready. Oh, what time is it? It's two. Let's see, five hours before dusk. That's a bit early. Huh. Okay, I guess I'll have to... Maybe I can't use it yet. Let's check the trader. The man behind the counter is inspecting a sack of white flour, mumbling to himself and occasionally cursing. The other locals walk away, giving you space to talk, trade in peace. Weevils. He points at a dark, a little dark blue insect that's trying to flee. Set me fire. <laughs> it was it was ground a few days ago. Nap pies for us tomorrow, looks like. Oh. Okay. He puts the sack on the ground. I'll take care of it, of it later. A road warden, eh? Ava the mayor cared enough to see you. And kids are lining up to look at your horse. Strangers are like ghosts to them now. Huh. He's wearing a simple brown robe with no hood. A rope instead of a belt. And modest trim made of green thread. It barely reaches below his knees. Revealing his sandals and crude pants made of linen. At the same time, it's way too large for him and hangs from him like a bag. He looks like a poor vendor from Hovleven. He stands sideways to you, his legs crossed, leaning on the counter with one hand and keeping the other up one on his hip. He's around 40, short and a bit greasy, with a humble beard and hair. His fingers are unusually long. Okay, let's be friendly. You're a trader, I assume. I guess we'll see each other often. For you, a trader. For my neighbors, the treasurer. Name's Akakios. Everyone brings here what they have in abundance, and I either sell it to travelers or divide it among the workers, builders, artisans. These things here are ne mine. He runs his eyes over the crates and barrels, but I can show you our wares if you want. But do ne ask me for better prices just because you're a traveler. I need to explain myself for every deal I make, or Thais will laugh at me all the way to the pyre. Yeah, I'm pretty good with food. I assume. I'm guessing one meal a day. I can't really spend money right now. Let's see. Ah, uh, do I have anything to sell? I have... I don't think I want to sell anything. Okay, what can you tell me about Asterion? That Ava thought he was here more than once. He did not leave much behind, smelly hoarder. He looks around and spits on the ground. At least he bought a blade for me. So make this guy happy by buying stuff. Do you remember what blade it was? Sure, it was a special one. A sickle sword. With a tip wider than twas at the grip. Long as from fingertips to shoulder. Nea sword. Nea knife. Single edged. Brought his own steel to melt for it. Huh. What's it good for, fencing? More for cutting bushes, creepers, roots. It will ne fell a tree, but it is a fine tool. He nods to a passerby, but his smile disappears as quickly as it had shown up. Pathfinders use it. Mapa, a uh, mapa used to have one as well. He chopped nuts with it, nuts and mufflons. So he took it to the wilderness. He shrugged. Pretty much anywhere. There are hills from here to the coast, and bogs in the north, and the heart of the for of the woods. Can you help you? Uh, can uh, help you with it? Okay. Let me see. What can I do for you? No. What? There is something urgent. I need. I need a medicament for my daughter. Not that she's hurt or anything. He raises his open palms. But but if it shows so, that he's not holding a knife, wait. Let's see. Uh, as if to so. Yeah, that's what. He raises his open palms as if to so he, that he's not holding a knife. She's a teen. Wants to start hunting in the woods. I cannot teach her much, but I'd sleep better with her having a healing potion. You have. He hesitates. Okay. <laughs> you have. He hesitates. Almost nine days. Bring me the potion before the last dusk, and I'll pay you five dragon rings. 
and uh, that's the money, right? The coins. Okay, actually, this might be a good spot to stop then, since I'll have a quest f for us in mind, and a time limit for the quest. How am I going to get a potion? I'll figure out. <clears throat> okay, I'm dying already. It's no early in the morning. Also, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.